Hello my soccer universe for a review of the past Serie A round which was round 14 and it was a round that actually kind of promised in a way maybe we get Juve can uh, close the gap because Inter finally get a tough program and then Inter just go to Napoli and win big and it's a little bit deflating. I, it is really really and I've been repeating it it's almost like a broken record. It is really really hard to not see Inter win this title uh, as much as I would like to because I really don't want Inter to win this title uh, they're the best team in Italy and it's not even close they are by far the best team in Italy for that they deserve a whole lot of credit and what goals they were scoring all three of them were really really good uh, we'll talk about it a bit but it was Chalanoglu's wonderful shoe shooting technique it was Barella slaloming through the na na Napoli fans and the way Lattero finds the pass to Tyram pretty amazing stuff and then you also have a goalkeeper with Jan Sommer that has been a little bit derided because he had not a good uh, half season at Bayern but honestly he has been a real good keeper for a club but I, I was afraid that he might actually be an upgrade on Onana who has been really good United fans Onana was not a bad goalie for Inter it's your club that does that bad but yeah uh while that might be true i mean uh the arc of the weekend was a actually pretty good with juve getting the early win in dramatic circumstances then milan also get, 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 get getting a win um with more or less the last ditch squad but uh actually not looking bad and then uh roma ticking up the pressure there was also Mourinho stuff we'll talk talk about and then yeah it worked for um, to knock Napoli more or less out of the title race, but Inter just really uh, took the air out of the room. If there was any hope that there might be a weakness for Inter, which we saw earlier this season, maybe a little bit at the moment, it's not happening. But yeah, uh, let's talk about the games and let's start in Monza, uh, where Juventus over, I think, really deserved their win. Uh, they got an early penalty, Vlahovic C saved on the rebound, an amazing save by Tri Di Gregorio <laughs> from the ensuing corner, Rabio, the captain Rabio. How did that happen to, to be honest? He was just a, such a train wreck. Gets the 1-0 for Juve, who probably should, should have scored more before for the half. And then Carboni with his first professional goal deep in stoppage time. And again, this was Juve then kind of uh, controlling the game. Monza having some half chances, no, no more. Gets the equalizer, and you think, yeah, you would drop again points in Monza. Remember last season, that, that was a really, really bad uh, show showing there. However, it's Federico Gatti, who just two minutes later finds a winner for Juventus. And ever since he made this blunder against Sassuolo, he has been actually pretty awesome. And so, Juve stay up there in the title race. But we saw already last weekend, they are a really good team. And not playing in Europe definitely helps. I don't think they're as good as Inter. That much has to be said. Uh, the Saturday, the games went the early. The Empoli uh, draws 1-1 at Genoa. Lazio score early through Pedro. Go even a man up because Mukumbu is set, set off that they're not more goals. It's a little bit disappointing. On the other side, you know, Lazio desperately need a win. They cannot repeat and Sarri still, you know, I think the champ that the champions in addition to losing important players just doesn't look right. But let's talk Milan's per performance because that was not one that I was really looking forward to, to be honest. But I have to say, uh, despite the second string line line, where most notably you have no defenders anymore because uh, Malik Jao got injured at home to, uh, to Dortmund. So suddenly if they are Nandes in the back. Um, and this is a frozen team that has having having a really good season uh, where it needed a wonder goal from Di Marco for Inter to actually break them down. But I always had the feeling that Milan have very well control over. Um, I was a little bit, bit, bit surprised about the front line with Jovic, Pulisic and Chukwese. But I think overall it worked out quite fine. Uh, they create created chances and then Luka Jovic scores a goal. Boy! That I did not expect, but at least his hard work working. I really hope he can find his Frankfurt form eventually, or that that that, that it does a rabbit, who was also derided, and then suddenly get get a goal became a really really important striker. That's what I wish for uh, for Jovic. Um, and then the game was decided in the 50th minute where Mike Mignot kicker was taken down sublimely by Pulisic, who is then ra uh, running a goal and lo lo lobs it over the goalkeeper. A beautiful goal. The goal 
for me of the uh, ev evening, then Milan full in control. Tomori gets his third. It's seated by Luka Jovic. Luka Jovic. Luka Jovic. Yes. Maybe he's not that in cake capable. Brescianini pulls, pulls away. But it's a 3-1 win for Milan. I was quite pleased with the performance. Uh, you got no two wins on, on the spin. Yes, Champions League doesn't look, look, look good. But maybe in the league, you will cruise this time. Uh, hopefully, you cruise this time to a top four finish. But, you know, you have to make it through January as always. Uh, Sunday, highly tight Bologna. Only 1-1 one, one at Lecce. That was not something I expected. Fiorentina get an easy 3-0 win over Salernitana. So, after the win over Lazio, Salernitana cannot really... Back the one, uh, one up, uh, the goals came early, uh, Peltran penalty, then Sotil and Bonaventura in the second half, 3-0. Uh, uh, without having, you know, it's a relegation battle in a way, but appropriate. The uh, uh, most fun, fun game was between Udine and Ellas, where Verona kind of a local derby, if, if you like, where Udine had a 2 nil lead through uh, Cabasale and Luca. However, uh, Jurich penalty, got the game shot, shot, shot again, and Gonsch. Equalize in the six is the six first. Luca again give Uden the lead, and then it's a late equalizer, 97th minute by Henry. Elas Verona get very much needed points, but as, as we'll see in the relegation battle, mm -hmm, still looks a little bit shaky. Uh, the Sassuolo Roma game was all about Jose Mourinho. Uh, pulling out the dark arts, first going well against the referee who is not fit in his mind for this game and uh, he will send off a Roma player blah 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 and then of course uh, Berardi is falling over himself every day is a great football player but he's only falling over himself uh, if he meant that then it really worked uh, yes Sassuolo took the early lead through Enrique with a Berardi assist and I have, I have, have to say uh, it looks like a Berardi shot that became a brilliant assist um, and then the game turns on a red card it had to be re uh, 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 a review because at the, at the, at the beginning it was only a yellow. But Baloka gets as I sent off by really just going straight on the foot. I guess this was all, all right. And then it was all Roma. Dybala equalized with a penalty. And then Rasmus Christensen after Dybala assist. And that's, it's really weird to see Christensen in a Roma jersey. Because I remember him playing for Salzburg not too long ago. Roma turn it around and uh, Roma a little bit on a roll, one has to say as well. Uh, that result, as we'll see, catapults them actually into the top four. And then Napoli Inter. I think the first half was wide open. Napoli created chances, Inter created, created chances, the two teams went for each other. That was fun to watch. But you could, you could see already, with all the chances that now Napoli created, Inter's were just a slight bit better. Turam had a goal allowed, disallowed for offside because his shoulder was off offside. And then it turns really, I mean, as I said, both had had, had, had a chance. I think Politano hit the um, crossbar. And then uh, after uh, Barella, I think it was, what was the corner or whatever? What, what, whatever it was, the way Chalanoglu hits that ball, you cannot hit it, Svita. The perfect drop kick, it takes a tra trajectory where the ball accelerates in, into net. It's a beautiful goal by the Vermin. I really cannot tell you how much I dislike Jaja Chalnoglu, but he is probably one of the best midfielders at the moment. And that was an absolute brilliant strike. Again, Napoli come out in the second half, close to an equalizer, also wanted to have a penalty, Inter wanted to have a penalty in the first half. But as soon as uh, Lato Martinez gets the ball off Na 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 Napoli, they start an attack, the ball comes to Barella, who slaloms. It's really, I mean, it's almost uh, two slightly heavy touches, but he still controls it so well that he can put it in a bed in, in, in internet. With the uh, first he takes with the right, right foot, gets past one defender, and then uh, with the left, puts it in. It's a really special goal. And that's how I sell the game. And then, yeah, it was not Lautaro, but Quadrado who sets up Turam uh, for the third. It's, as I said, it was deflating. It deflated the Maradona, but it also kind of deflated the league because. Who is going to stop this Inter side? I, it's really not there. It's really not, 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 not there. The only thing that was weird on this evening is that Inter played in orange, which I still think doesn't look quite right to me. And then on Monday, also pretty big result, Torino 3-0 over Atalanta. 3-0 over Atalanta. I did not expect it. I kind of thought, thought this match as an interesting one because it's 7-0. And then you see the goal scorers. I did not watch, watch the game. But 
Duvan Zapata from Atalanta scores twice. Gets the 1-1 in and then stops up shot that he'll move with Sanabria penalty in between. I find this very, very interesting. Atalanta also hitting a little bit of a rough patch, if you like. So in the standings now, Inter two points ahead, ahead of Juve and six ahead of Milan. Uh, the table is much tighter than I think it feels. And you see 84% Inter winning it all. We all see Roma suddenly in fourth place, level on points with Napoli, but goal the difference takes them ahead. Still outside us, uh, according to uh, my, my model, that uh, Napoli is a little bit more favored. Fiorentina now overtake Bologna, Atalanta and Lazio. Yeah, kind of the top, but you know, Torino all, all, all also in the top 10. I think this is probably the top 10 in, in a way, but it's relatively tight. On the bottom, we see uh, Salernitana and Cagliari seem like Gorgonas, Ellas, Empoli. That will be a battle. And Udine, I think, is not out of it. As is Genoa and Lecce, I would think. Uh, I don't think a Sassolo in the long term will remain down there. It's also by my model, Sassolo should finish in the 12th spot for sure. Uh, the teams going down, uh, Verona, Cagliari and Salernitana. Whereas on the top, yeah, Inter, Juve, Milan, Napoli. In that order, maybe Roma can get in there as well. And then we have in the next round, start early, Juve, Napoli. As of what I've seen from Napoli against Inter, I don't expect much except for a dirty 1-0 Juve win. But we also get Atalanta-Milan. That will be an interesting one. Inter should have a field day with Udine, I have, I have to say. And then on Sunday, also a traditional duel between Roma and Fiorentina. It's always a highlight of the season. Uh, the Monday is very much relegation fodder and for the hardcore Serie A fans. Let's see if I will be watching. Any case, please let me know what you thought about the happening Serie A this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.